morning. And thank you for the opportunity to provide an overview of Con Edison's AMI project and highlight a number of success stories from our work with C3 over the past several years. There's been a lot of accomplishments uh, to date, and we believe that we're going to continue to leverage the C3 AI platform and the C3 team to deliver even more value in future years. This morning, I'm going to provide an overview of Con Edison, our AMI project, including a few of the very cutting edge initiatives that have been rolled out with our project. I'll also provide an overview of the work that C3 has performed over the last several years that has developed or actually resulted in significant benefits. I'll then turn the presentation over to Dan Smilowitz. Dan is leading our enterprise data analytics team, and that team is expanding over the past several years to meet all the needs from the company. Con Edison, right? Con Edison delivers energy to New York City. It operates one of the most complex grids in the United States. We have the most reliable electric system in the US, and we are serving some of the most demanding customers. Although Con Edison occupies only an area of about 1% of all of New York State, we deliver 44% of the electricity. The AMI project, right? This was the biggest project in company history. It includes the deployment of 5.3 million smart meters and a communication network comprised of over 22,500 devices. We are communicating with more than 99.9% .9 of the meters, a very, very high performance rate, but we're still looking to continue to even get higher. So the smart meters themselves have a lot of data, right? Each of these meters measures not only power to our customer, but we have voltage information, we have a, a chip or a module that tells us when a customer is out of service, right? So it's really a, a big sensor deployment that communicates wirelessly to our systems. The AMI project is Con Edison's largest project in its 200 year history, and is changing Con Edison in more ways than any other project in company history. It has improved performance among, amongst many areas, including outage management, public safety, billing, and energy efficiency. The 1.285 billion project was completed under budget and is expected to, put, to provide over $3.2 billion of benefits, $500 more million dollars than we originally estimated. Near real, we have a number of unique initiatives with this project, right, and really trailblazed across the industry. We are providing near real-time data to all of our customers at an enormous scale of 2 billion reads per day. We developed the first of its kind integrated natural gas detector, which will automatically sound an alarm to our control centers so we can dispatch the fire department. These devices have already averted a number of catastrophic events. Additionally, we have developed the capability to shed or open meters to, to avoid a cascading distribution event. All of these deliverables that we rolled out and as we ramped up the project early in the program has driven up benefit projections. Not only does the AMI system allow us to monitor consumption, it also allows us to improve the efficiency of operation of the grid. Through our conservation voltage optimization program, we are projected to save our customers about 1.75% in electricity. That's a huge savings in both energy and also emission reductions. The near real-time data of the AMI system is, prov is providing has led to a sharp increase in our demand response program participation. Right, so demand response program is customers can actually get paid to actually reduce their load during a heat event or a system emergency. On the C3AI platform, we integrated over 20 
data sources of legacy and AMI systems at Con Edison to address a high number of high value needs. And we did this with speed and at scale. One of the first deliverables from C3 was to support the effort to deliver near real time metering data to our customer online portal. The C3 platform also interfaces with our DR program, demand response program platform, to support enrollment and set settlement payment capability. We talked about the communication network, right? So we have this extensive communication network. It's critical that this network is maintained at a high performance level. It supports not only billing, but also devices such as natural gas detectors, outage support, load shedding, and hot socket alarms. The application developed by C3, the C3 team helps us with identifying pockets of non-communicating meters so that we can direct our workforces to either troubleshoot a network device or replace meters. The application shows pockets of non-communicating meters and breaks out the drivers for the exception. Right? So if you look at this map here, you have different areas where we have problem meters. We don't have a lot of uh, non-communicate meters, but we now can direct our workforce to the appropriate locations. And we have dashboards that are developed actually through the analytics to actually tell us where the problem areas are. The C3 application has tremendously improved public safety across Con Edison. Hot socket alarms and open neutral. A hot socket alarm occurs when you actually have a poor connection in a meter. So it, be, it could be a customer wiring to the meter that's loose. Or it could be because the customer is hooking up electric load to the system that the system wasn't designed for, such as electric heaters or EV chargers. We have developed analytics with the C3 application to give us advanced warning of these alarms, and we put them into a monitoring phase where our operators continuously review these problem meters. We leverage the C3 application to scan meter temperatures every two hours and then monitor to ensure that the issue is resolved. And just last year alone, we were able to detect over 300 hot socket alarms. Over the summer, Con Edison had installed a new smart meter at the Conroy's home. These meters communicate electricity use directly with the company. Unbeknownst to Conroy, they also directly alert Con Ed when problems pop up. No idea. None. Uh, I figured they were doing it so they could charge me more. On Tuesday, Conroy says he was surprised to find an emergency Con Ed crew in front of the house. They told him his smart meter detected a hot socket that previously existed on the home, a wire dangerously loose, and the family had no clue. It was a potential fire hazard as when they finally opened the box up, the one side was completely burned out. So again, this is the trend that's developed through the application where we can look at the temperature trend and actually tell us, okay, proactively go out and address that meter. We also used machine learning to look at the voltage waveform anomalies across the, the electric meters. And we developed a tool that actually tells us when we have an open neutral. Now an open neutral could uh, actually lead to power quality issues at the meter. It could damage equipment. And also, it could cause electric shocks, right? So this was a tool that we developed with C3. And over the last year, we detected 30 of these open neutrals. Prior to AMI, we didn't have real-time visibility of voltage levels at each of our customer endpoints. Now with AMI, we have this visibility which enables us to optimize the voltage levels within each network. We have saved our customers millions of dollars through this application. By just tweaking the voltage level to the optimum level, well within specifications, we're saving our customers millions of dollars. We've already achieved over $130 million worth of savings since 2019, and we expect to achieve $450 million worth of energy savings and emissions benefits. 
C3 actually has developed a tool for us to actually monitor the voltages across the service territory. And with this tool, we were able to identify problem voltage areas, right, so that we can actually reinforce the grid. And just this past rate case, the PSC approved of another $45 million worth of investment to reinforce the grid so we can further enhance our CVO program. So it's a lot of meters that are being read and really a tremendous amount. We're talking about 3.7 million meters to actually look at the voltage and actually identify where the, the problem area is. We're using AI to reduce transformer failures. We have a demand aggregator program to monitor loading and transformers in near real time. And we use the machine learning to identify problem transformers so that they can be replaced prior to failure. And we've just launched a couple of A2 AI pilots uh, late last year. One of them is to look at work order resolution to make sure that the meters are being installed and actually removed from the billing system and everything is tying back to our customer information systems. We have many thousand meters across Con Edison that are replaced every year, 50,000 or so. We initiated the pilot using AI that will enable us to identify discrepancies between our work management systems and our billing systems so that the appropriate system corrections can be made. And finally, we have a second uh, AI pilot that was initiated. And uh, what we're looking at here is mapping errors, right? So we have all these overhead transformers as well as underground transformers. So we're identifying problem areas uh, with meter mapping where it is not accurate. And this mapping error can lead to inaccurate outage reporting and associated inefficient use of our workforces to, to go out and, and, and troubleshoot issues in the field. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dan, who's going to provide an overview of his team and the many other initiatives that he is leading across Con Edison. Good morning, everyone. My name is Dan Smilowitz and I lead the enterprise data and analytics team at Con Ed. So our team was founded in 2017 to support Tom and the AMI team as we knew we needed new technology, we needed it fast so that we could actually gain insights out of this data and not just be able to uh, gather the data but to actually take action based on it. Since then we have grown to serve the wider needs of the enterprise and have focused on not just delivering solutions but also looking at how we can drive an enterprise strategy around data and analytics, how we can support the platform, and then how we govern all of the data and insights that are happening around this. Um, our team, when we started, was four employees, and in the seven years since, we've now grown to 85 as we've had more and more work coming in. This is a combination of employees, C3 COE resources, and uh, contract staff augmentees with firms like uh, Fractal, who's here today. I'm going to go quickly because I know that we're uh, <laughs> running late on time already. So when we started this journey with Tom and the AMI team, we were in a very heavily buy mode. We knew we needed to get something, get it installed. It was something different than anything we had dealt with before. So we licensed the whole platform. We bought the energy intelligence and AMI operations modules and then got into this cycle of customization. But as we saw the opportunity to look more broadly across the enterprise, we knew we needed a flexible model for delivery. So as we started working with the CVO app that Tom mentioned, as well as the demand aggregator applications, we saw an opportunity to build something custom and figure out how to leverage the flexibility that we had with the platform. And then we started working with other groups. So we started working with our electric operations team, with our energy management team, which looks at the whole system. And I'll get into those in a little more detail shortly, but started building, iterating, so that we could deliver quick value, uh, build confidence in the platform and the capabilities, and then continue to deliver uh, value to go after those higher value items. Um, and recently, last year, we started leveraging this pilot model, which helps us with newer teams strike a balance between 
understanding what a group is going to get before we start work with a fixed scope, but also the ability to then scale and iterate as we go forward. So one of the most successful projects that we've had beyond the initial AMI scope has been with our electric operations team and our grid modernization initiative. So here we've focused on how we enable our engineers and our operators to uh, gather all this insight that they have from systems that are owned by IT, systems that are owned by electric operations, systems that may even be owned by third parties, to bring it all into one place and start to develop uh, in, insights that have major impacts on safety, the open neutrals example that Tom mentioned earlier, our reliability, regulatory, and all of these are driven by value and prioritized across value. And then as we look at how all of these different pieces are connected and starting to think about integrated system planning, how do we bring our AMI data to go from forecasting where we may see growth at a network level across big chunks of our service territory down to an account level and then aggregating up. And this allows us to predict customer behavior where we may see growth of these new technologies, bringing in a lot of the data that we have about our customers, and then looking at how weather may impact this, where we may start to see loads changing. And a major driver of these have been in uh, geothermal heat pumps and electric vehicles. Obviously, electric vehicles have really taken off in the past year or two. And we also see that geothermal heat pumps are changing how our customers behave. So we've typically been an organization driven, uh, our peak has been driven by AC, especially uh, in the city where it gets hot quickly and people uh, turn their AC up and it starts to drive our load and strain our systems. As we move towards some of these technologies and we move from gas and oil powered heat into electric heat and using technologies by heat pumps, people are installing their chargers and these heat pumps and they're going to have a meaningful impact on our customer behaviors and impacts on our grid, but they're largely invisible to us. So we've been able to leverage the platform to build out some custom solutions uh, using some of the information that we have. So Con Ed has a number of programs for managed charging, where we pay incentives to people at the vehicle level, wherever they're charging, to do their charging off peak hours, just reduce the strain on the system. And we were able to take that data, look at the meter data that we already have, and build out a deep learning model to actually break down the load and take that chunk and identify this customer, we're able to associate their vehicle with the service address, we know where their overall load is and figure out what chunk of that is driven by the electric vehicle charger. Then we can take those patterns that we've identified and start to apply them to figure out where are their chargers that may be invisible to us where somebody didn't register with our energy services team, they just called the same electrician that their neighbor called and installed it, so that we can figure out where there may be chargers, and then we can start to use that to uh, market these programs to people, to shift some of the load. And this has impacts on all different areas of our business, anybody that's dealing with this changing grid as these new technologies are coming on. We can identify where we have networks or transformers at risk of overload, trips, potentially explosions. And we can also manage, uh, measure how effective these programs are. So I'm not going to drain every visual here, but on the rightmost one, you'll see we had a customer who we were able to detect they had an electric vehicle. And only uh, less than 12% of their charging was happening in this big off peak window. And then once we were able to enroll them in the program, we saw that that shifted to almost 93%. So we can actually identify candidates, figure out those that are most impactful to the grid based on how overloaded a transformer or a network may be, incentivize them and see how we can reduce the strain on the grid. So as we've been working with all these different groups, um, we've seen these different operating models work well with different teams based on who we're dealing with, who our product owners are. But one of the things that's been really helpful, and this is where our licensing of the whole platform has enabled us to deliver quickly is as we've shifted from our initial kickoff of the project with this big enterprise uh, implementation of C3, moving towards a more agile model has helped us uh, win some friends quickly as we're able to build some quick things where somebody knows if I just had a way to bring these two data sources together and do this process that I have to do, 
we can start to build the foundation and we can layer on the data sources that we already have. So as we do this, we've been able to deliver more efficiently across the enterprise, both by standardizing things across, we have work management in our electric team, in our gas team, in our steam team. So building that in a way that we can quickly jump from team to team and work more quickly. And then also as we build something, uh, something new, setting it up in a flexible way so that we can then uh, shorten the timeline for delivery on future applications. And then generative AI, uh, in the past nine months, I've gotten more inquiries from the business on generative AI than in the past five years on machine learning. So we're looking at how we can expand and scale the solutions we already have, but figure out where we can deliver, deliver more and start to fold it into all other solutions to get to those bigger, more complex, higher value applications. And then a lot of folks at the company are comfortable in Power BI. They have existing solutions in Power BI figuring out how we can leverage that new connector to give them something in a tool they're used to reduce the number of screens is something that we th see a lot of value in. And then we have, with these additional solutions that we've built out, we've already um, uncovered over $25 million in annual uh, cost reduction. And we think that there's a lot more there. So we're looking at how we can start to standardize and um, really realize that value and not have it be theoretical. Uh, with that, thank you, everybody. Appreciate your time.